around him. And if he's a smart guy, he's listening to what Barry McGuigan says to him because Barry's been there and done it. And you could not have a better mentor than Barry McGuigan. Well, he's certainly managing to keep his feet on the floor. He's a level-headed young man, but he's got some big ambitions and he wants to take over from Barry as, a, as an Irish hero. In many ways, this is a guy who's got something to lose tonight because he comes in with that Celtic Super Bantamweight title. This is being billed as an eliminator for the British title as well. And he's the overwhelming favourite in this one. Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Hearn for Match Room Sport, sponsored by Butte Property Services. Live and exclusive on Sky Sports HD Big Time Boxing proudly presents 10 three minute rounds of boxing for the Celtic Super Bantamweight title. The officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Student in charge at ringside is Mr. Ron Havertz. Timekeeper at the bell, Mr. Peter McCann from Harrow. The three scoring judges at ringside for this title are Winford Jones from Aberdeer, Terry O'Connor from Birmingham, and Grant Wallace from Wooten Bassett. Finally, when the action commences, the star referee in charge of the action, Mr. Howard Foster from Ma Doncaster. Introducing to you firstly, Boxing out of the red corner, wearing the red and white coloured shorts. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled eight stone, yeah, yeah, nine yeah, pounds, shine, eight shine, ounces. Shine, shine. His excellent record reads, 13 contests, 10 wins. One of those wins coming by way of knockout with only three defeats. He comes to the ring this evening as the current Welsh area super bantamweight champion, presenting from Kevin Forrest, Wales, the challenger, Robbie Talley! And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the yellow colored shorts trimmed with black. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled on the championship limit, eight down, 10 pounds. His perfect record reads nine contests, nine wins. Six of those wins coming by a way of knockouts, Tonight, he makes the first defense of his title, presenting the current Celtic Super Bantamweight Champion from Belfast, Northern Ireland, Carl the Jacko Frampton. <laughs> Mr. Foster with his final instructions, 10 three-minute rounds. Okay, lads, you both know the rules. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both of you watch your heads. Good luck to you both. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. And this one should be a good one. Look at the focus and the intensity in the eyes of Carl Frampton. And somewhere, I just caught a glimpse of him, three or four rows back, tucked away in a corner. Barry McGuigan is watching nervously, chewing the gum. He said to us earlier he's more nervous about this one than Carl Frampton is. And what about Robbie Turley? What can he do, the man in the, in the red trunks with the white trim? Took this fight at three weeks' notice, but is in superb physical condition. But he takes a big early shot. And Frampton is known as a guy who can hit you hard with both fists. And you said he looks focused, his concentration's good. He's not missing with his shots. Reserving his energy, just picking his punches. Turley's a tough nut himself, just the one stoppage, and that was on a cut eye in the ninth round of a ten-rounder as well, so definitely not a guy that you call Chinny. But can he stand up to the firepower of Carl Frankton? From just loading up a little bit, looking for the, the big right hand. Little riposte from Turley. 
big question mark for me in this one, Glenn, is Turley's only got one stoppage, and that was really early in his career. Has he got the firepower to slow down someone like Carl Frampton? That's right, he's got to work very, very hard, hasn't he? And all the time, Frampton is dangerous because he's a good puncher, and he's sharp. Certainly looks like a youngster on the road to something big. And Howard Foster with a, an early warning. You can hear Robbie Turley's uh, chilly section in full voice. But he's on his own in there. Working the body, though, Turley in this uh, opening round. That's the uh, obvious strategy that he's been uh, working on with Tony Borg at the St. Joseph's uh, Gym in Newport, just down the road. I'll tell you, trying to be busy, switch hitting, trying to give plenty of angles, having some success. And uh, had a little complaint there about a low body shot as well, how Foster was having none of it. But I do like the way Franklin goes about his work. He can give him the run around a little bit early on, but the, the quality. You see, when he puts his shots together, he looks very good. Yeah, a real air of expectancy around this place. Because Frampton can take you out with a single punch. And he can wear you down quickly, too. What I like is his punch economy. Almost every punch he's thrown has landed. Yeah, no wasted effort at all. Turley's boxed a sensible opening round as well, though. He hasn't gone wham-bam, held the leather. He's thinking about what he's doing. It's an interesting opening round, to say the very least. Fascinating stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, The Sun and the News of the World are giving you a free £5 gift card for your favourite shops, like Tesco, Debenhams, Boots and many more. Get a free £5 gift card when you join Sun Perks, the brand new reward scheme. Offer starts this weekend only in The Sun and the News of the World. No catches, just perks. At Wix, we're proud to offer up to 33% off hundreds of quality products. But hurry, offer ends Sunday, 5th of June. It's got our name on it. Wix. Jerry Story in Carl Frampton's corner saying, Turley is wide open to straight shots. Pick him off. Yeah, it was quite erratic, Turley, but he gets shots through. But the accuracy was very good from Frampton. Good left hook landing there. And he's quite open, Turley. Yeah, took it high in the temple. Turley took it well. That let him know he's in a real fight here. Round two, and Turley lands a decent right hand to open up. But Frampton's hunting him down. And already you get the sense that Turley doesn't have the power to bother Frampton too much. But he's going to make Frampton think a little bit in there. Because he's moving all the time, he's switch hitting, he's given angles, trying to get his shots off. But there's good accuracy from Frampton. Yeah, as you say, Glenn Turley might not have the power, but he will know that going in. He's going to really have to outbox him and outthink him. Can he do it over ten rounds? But that's what he'll, he will have prepared for. He knows. You know, the power's not there, so he, he's got to expect a long fight, condition himself for that. And at the minute, he's trying to give Frampton the run around. Frampton continues to whip in those body shots, and Turley trying to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And lands a decent right to the body himself. Nice little left uppercut got through, but again, Frampton seems to take it very well, but Turley asking one or two questions here. Well, Barry McGuigan himself said it, this is not going to be a walkover for Carl Frampton. They came in respecting Robbie Turley, you can see why. I was going to give you a good idea of what we can expect from Frampton. It is a step up in class from what he's been getting. But he does look cool and collected in there. Left to the body, and that time it was definitely a low blow. Turley felt one in the first round, and he was right to feel it as well. And this time, Howard Foster saying, Yeah, okay. He was trying to get through to the body, Frampton. 
trying to slow Turley down. I think that punch might have slowed him down a little bit. Just a little. Does my memory play tricks with me, or did, did Barry himself have one or two problems with uh, being a little bit borderline around the body shots early uh, in his career? Dare not say. <laughs> Well, he's had his warning. Great atmosphere in here. Turley's brought his supporters, and uh, there's an Irish contingent here to watch Andrew Murray in our main event. And, of course, they're supporting Carl Frampton all the way. Well, it's good to see how Frank is going to work his man out because the movement is giving him something to think about. Yeah, another little word from Howard Frost about those body shots from Frampton and Frampton looking a little bit wild and ragged there. And I wonder if Turley's just starting to draw him into the kind of fight that he wants. Patience is going to be the key here for Frampton. Turley makes him miss again. This is a good little spell for uh, Robbie Turley. You got five minutes? Depends on what for. Lunch. <laughs> I can't have lunch with you. I'm just an egg. Oh, you're more than just an egg. You're our boiled. <laughs> you're meaty and breaded. Well, when you put it that way. Oh, very naughty. <laughs> Oasis. It'll go with anything. Hi, it's a court here to see you. Quick, put your leg back on. That man is a mass of nervous energy. Tougher to watch than be in the ring, he was saying. There's the, the low punch, definitely strained very far south. Yeah, if the other one was borderline. That was straight right down into South America. Well, we've got a little bit of uh, Vaseline that needs to be uh, cleared from the left eye of Robbie Turley and we can get going round three of this Celtic super bantamweight title fight. Carl Frampton, the man in the yellow trunks with the black trim. The holder, Robbie Turley, with local support behind him, looking to spring the upset. And Turley boxing with plenty of ambition. Certainly not phased by Frampton's reputation. Well, I've got the game plan, Glenn. I think that's the thing that's, that, that's really impressed me. Whether that's going to work over 10 rounds remains to be seen. But he is working to a pattern here. And he's trying to make him miss, frustrate him, pick him off. And above all, avoid those big shots that we know Frampton can throw. Well, Frampton's going to go on to bigger and better things. He's got to get past the legs of Robbie Turley. He's got ambitions of his own. And he's come out here trying to take the, the play away from Carl Frampton. Bust his bubble. Oh, he's just nipping in, getting his shot, and then getting out of trouble. And again, making... Oh, Frampton didn't miss that time. The first one missed, but he landed a good right hand. And another one. And he's starting to get through a little bit here now, the champion. Well, Turley is having to stand and fight. And uh, Turley gives him a nod as if to say, come on, hit me. Now, that might not be smart, because Turley is starting to take some punishment here. Well, now Turley's changed his fight plan. He's had to, really, because Frampton's pinned him down. And now Frampton's got him where he wants him, right in front of him. Turley's having to stand with Frampton, though, but takes a punch a for it. There was a definite wobble there, and he took four or five really solid shots. And he doesn't want to be taking too many of those, but you've got to credit Robbie Turley. He's coming back with some punches of his own. Well, it's brave from Turley. I'm not sure how wise it is. And as you say, Glenn, it was a switch in strategy. The, the peekaboo stuff was working for him. And then suddenly for a moment there, he was happy to stand and trade, and that isn't going to work. 
No, I don't think he was really happy to stand. I just didn't. I didn't think he'd get out of the way, Nick. I thought Frampton made him made him stand and fight. But he, he certainly he's doing that. He's trying to give it a go. But when he does, he's very accurate, isn't he, Frampton? He really is. And this is a pretty good round for the Jackal. But Turley plugging away is not being overwhelmed in this fight, far from it. Yeah, you've got to give it to, to Turley for being game, trying to stand with Fram. Got a little mark on his left cheekbone. It seems to weather that little storm as well. There was a bit of spring in his step as he went back to his corner, but he, he took some decent shots in that last round. Yeah, his chin stood up to him quite well, though. It was a good right hand. Just there, just saw the gap, it was split second, but he got that punch over the top. And there tried that the left hook in the right hand. Getting decent success. It's a real good one, isn't it? Frampton with that accuracy that you were talking about, Glenn, is scoring at a very high percentage. Yeah, it's good to see he doesn't Double waste jab, anything. Jab. Jab. But this is warming into a good old scrap. Second out, round four. Round four, scheduled for ten. The champion, Carl Frampton. Looking okay and pretty much in control, but being given a pretty decent workout by Robbie Turley. He might be a big underdog, but he's certainly boxing with plenty of self-belief. Well, he told Turley to go back to plan, and that's moved around the ring. And if the stats are to be believed, Glenn, the strategy, whilst you can understand the thinking, it's not working at the moment. He needs no. to up the work right. And the problem is the accuracy and the good punching from Frandon as he has a scrap again, toe to toe, crowd enjoying it. Frampton just stood there and let Turley bang away, didn't take a backward step. But Turley really giving it a go here. Well, he's a game fighter, Turley, and it's good to see Frampton in with somebody like this. He's come, wanting to get the win, not afraid of Frampton. and really look to unload with the big left. So just managed to avoid it. Oh, one of those right hooks to the body. And now it's Turley who's looking to come forward and try and land his own big punches. Does he have the big punch, Glenn? That's the question. I think he's got a decent enough punch to, to get a fighter's attention. Maybe not good enough to get a good stoppage record, but but certainly you know he's, he's keen enough to stand there. Some decent body punches. Very solid right hook to the body coming in. Yeah, Barry McGuigan, like the rest of us, absolutely transfixed by this one. And there's a little and a cut and a dab of blood, isn't there? Yeah, Just by the right eye. Yeah, that's a, a front. Yeah, yeah, that's to the side. Oh, was that caused by a clash of heads? Well, he's had a decent round this round, Turley. And that cut's starting to worsen. And they're going to have to go to work on that. So, signs of wear and tear here for Carl Frampton. And maybe facing his first little crisis. With that cut. But still walking through Turley's best shots. But Turley now might want to rethink the strategy and pepper away at that cut eye. A few left jabs around there could worsen that up. And we're still early in this fight. What a cracker so far. This is a baby generating data in a neonatal ward. Every heartbeat, every breath, every anomaly. 
from over a thousand pieces of unique information per second, helping doctors find new ways to detect life-threatening infections up to 24 hours sooner. On a smarter planet, analyze the data and you can predict what will happen faster, so you can do what they're doing in Toronto and build a smarter hospital. Let's build a smarter planet. Well, well, some damage there for Carl Frampton. Was it a clash of heads or was it a punch? Well, Turley certainly did a lot better in that round. He stood, he tried to push Frampton back, he let the shots go. Oh, and that was a, a decent punch. You see the blood come straight away. So that might have been landed with a, a decent left hand from five. Robbie Turley. Ian Johnson, the cuts man, has been going to work. Referee just saying the cut was from a punch. Round five. Frampton certainly ahead on Glenn's card, but certainly not having it all his own way. Well, it's definitely not. Turley totally giving a good account of himself, certainly showing plenty of fire and tenacity. It's been clever from Turley, hasn't it? They really have prepared well for this one. But they came in knowing what he had to do. He's tried to do that, but then been drawn into a fight, and you know, at times he's happy to stay there. Frampton looks to unload with the big right hand, and Turley saw it coming a mile away. And now, can Turley get that left jab of his going and work that injured eye? Got caught there, though. Nice little left as uh, Frampton changed his point of attack. And a left jab comes in from Frampton this time. You can Frampton see the snap in that change. punch. Sorry, Nick. Frampton just changing his style, looking to box a little bit, showing some of his boxing skills. Trying to be a bit more elusive, I think. He's been told that with that, we're having the cut. A little left again from Turley. Frampton looks to land the uh, straight left jab. Yeah, a little bit more caution here from, from both guys, actually. Loading up there, though. Yeah. Oh, a lovely combination from Frampton. Three punch. Three I mean, punch I mean, combination all together, lovely. And then following up with a left of the body, but Turley took them all. How many more can he take? Decent right to the body himself but repaid in kind by Frampton and that cut's starting to open up a little bit but it looks like it's under control Ian Johnson has done his work a little bit of blood on the forehead of Frampton as well I'm not sure if that's a cut or just a bit of blood from the eye and that cut's starting to open up now well as you say Glenn not quite sure what happened there and a decent punch he's getting through again from Turley. He's going through the gears, isn't he, Frampton? Showing a lot of class. But Turley, very gritty, he's trying to fight back. I was going to say, Glenn, he's, he's going through the gears, Frampton, and Turley's going with him. Exactly. Making it a very good fight. Now Ian Johnson's going to have to go to work again as that eye started to worsen the longer that round went on. Mentos gum, irresistibly fresh. Well, they're going to work on, uh, on Carl Frampton's eye in the corner. And this is why. Nice punch picking there from Frampton, just getting his two in. Looking for the, the body, and there's that nice combination. Three punches. Halfway through the fight, Frampton, you sense, is ahead but certainly not having it all his own way. Nice little 
little straight left again. What Jerry Story was talking about earlier in the in the fight, right at the end of the first round, he was saying Turley is open to these straight lefts. Well, he does carry his hands very low, Turley. It's not a great idea against someone with the power of Frampton. This is the problem Turley's got, though, Glenn. As, as, as much as he's managing to avoid too much damage from those big Frampton shots, is he doing enough work to well, win these rounds? That's right, he's got he's to pick up the rounds and he's got to pick up the points and he's not doing that. Missing with a lot of his punches. Nice little right hand. And again, making Frampton start to look a little bit ragged. Certainly given Framden plenty to think about. And I think Framden's going to try and target the body a little bit more. Try and slow his man down. Yeah, Turley's body language is absolutely terrific as Frampton unloads a big howitzer that they saw at the back of the hall. And getting a little bit cocky in there as well, Turley. Well, Frampton just keeps has to keep to his, his game plan. Just keep missing these punches. Don't let that cut get any worse. A nice little right to the body from uh, Turley. Followed up with a left downstairs as well. And Frampton is starting to miss with some regularity the longer this fight goes on, whether that's fatigue or whether Turley's just making him miss or just a combination of the two. But that accuracy that Glenn was talking about earlier in the fight, not quite the same now. Well, you sense Turley just growing in confidence a little bit. And maybe Frampton just getting a bit frustrated. I think talking to Barry earlier in the week, he was expecting the fight like this, he wasn't expecting it to, to be all from, thought it would have its tough points. Uh, Gavin Reese and uh, Andrew Murray, our main event. Well, here is Gavin Reese, former world champion, looking to become European lightweight champion a little bit later on this evening against the quiet man from Cavan, Andrew Murray. Reese, the big favourite in that one, but uh, Carl Frampton was the big favourite in this one. And whilst he might be ahead and he might be winning this fight, he is not having it all his own way. Definitely not. Turley still in there, still landing with punches. And in that round, I, I probably have Turley sharing the spoils. He did pretty well. Tough fight to score, Glenn, isn't it? Well, I think that more of the punches are being thrown by Turley, but the, the better punches, the more effective are coming from Frampton. If it does go the distance, and I know a lot of people ringside expected that this would not go the distance, well, there's three scoring judges will be checking this one out. Glenn has Frampton with a comfortable lead, but that's an unofficial scorecard. Frampton just has to be careful, he's got to keep his work rate up. Good punch, punch of Connery, but he, he's got to not stop punching. Again, the Turley strategy early in this round is to try and make Frampton miss one and two. Let the doubt start to creep into the Irishman's mind, mess with his head a little bit, and then see if he can pick him off. And this is where Turley has been the busier. From just has a habit of just shutting up shop a little bit.
doesn't seem to be getting any worse. Doesn't look like that's going to be a major issue in this fight. Oh, Frampton caught him there. That's the best punch for some time for the Irishman. And Turley needs a quick response. But the problem is he's not doing a great deal in this round. Frampton, Turley just looking to outbox him from long range. Yeah, there's a lot of dancing and moving, isn't there? But not landing that many punches, Turley. It's a strategy that's trying to catch the eye of the judges and just nicking around here and there. And the work rate has dropped a little bit in this round, which is hardly surprising. And again, Turley just ducks inside and Frampton unable to land cleanly. And a little telling off from Howard Foster for both fellas. I should think this is getting a little bit frustrating for oh, Frampton. Now, is that a knockdown or a slip? Howard Foster will count it as a knockdown, the right hand, but Turley is trying to make out that it was a slip, but it scores as a knockdown. Well, it certainly looked like a, an overhand right landed to the, the head that caused the knockdown. And that just increases the problems for Robbie Turley. He signals to his corner that he's, he's fine there, gives him a little wink. Well, he might be fine physically, but if this one is remotely close on the cards, that's a big balance tilter right there. Oh, and that was definitely after the bell, and, and, and point, a point off. Howard Foster is having none of it. Well, he landed certainly after the bell and, and immediately acknowledged it. And Howard Foster this time not giving him the benefit of the doubt, so we've had a knockdown that Turley didn't like. And then a point off as well. Howard Foster wasted no time at all. Well, plenty to talk about here. There's that the right hand. Well, there's certainly. the slip as well. The right, the right yeah. leg just, he just I mean, lost he, he, it. He, he did. Um, he did land a punch, but he did lost his balance a little bit as well. I don't think it had much of an effect on him, but he did go down. And then the one after the bell. Six out, oh, round eight. A punch landing as he was slipping as well, but uh, Howard Foster just calming everything down. Hasn't been a dirty fight, it's been a busy fight. And certainly that round was a controversial one. Fainting and moving. Yeah. Just trying to be elusive, isn't he? Yeah. And proving to be elusive as well. It's uh, cat and mouse stuff. No. But the cat just got the mouse with a couple of decent lefts. Well, he's using his brain a little bit more now. Frampton just trying to pick the punches, avoid getting hit off Turley, catch the eye with some of those quick jabs. You need fights like this, Glenn, don't you? You, you can't have it too easy all, all, all the way while, while you're, you're climbing the rankings. Most definitely. This is a fight that, you know, where you're, you're learning all the time. What he's got to be careful of is that, you know, he doesn't let it slip. Got to get the win from. Again, Turley. That's no, not hustling enough, really. If he is behind, he's got to really start to uh, turn on the jets here in what's left of this round and the last two. Needs to do a bit more, Turley. Picking the better punches, Framden. Decent left comes in from uh, Turley, and he follows up with the right hand as well. But at no point in this fight has Frampton been wobbled. 
Turley, plenty of ambition. He hasn't really read the script here, has he? He certainly has not. And you, you wondered if Barry was being a bit cautious when he was talking about this is not going to be an easy one. Your, your natural caution does kick in, but i tell you, Barry McGuigan read this one absolutely spot on. Robbie Turley has come here to make a real battle of this. And at no point in the fight has he really been outclassed, the Welshman. He's been around and he's been busy. Well, definitely had his share of success. Better punch pick in here from Frampton, though. Yeah, that was a decent little spell, and it continues as well. A little short right hand for Turley, but Turley comes back, but then gets punished with a decent combination as well. Those two punches looked as if they hurt him. Yeah, and the uppercut right on the bell. That hurt as well. And that was a terrific finish to the round for Carl Frampton. It's a fantastic fight, right? It's a great fight, the crowd are living it, right? But do you want to be the loser in a great you're fight? You're going to win me. What do you want to be remembered for? Yeah. Losing a great fight? Or you want to never win anything? What do you want to be remembered for? Yeah. Well, yeah. Get don't win anything, right? So stop being big or stop being smart. Meet them in them straight shots. Yeah. Everything's straight, OK? Yeah, accurate punches from Frampton. Again, it's his better punch economy that's catching the eye. And I think in the early corner, they were getting a little bit angry that he was maybe playing in Frampton's hands, standing in front of him. Well, it was interesting listening to the two corners there. You heard Tony Borg saying to uh, to Turley, "Go out and be a hero." I mean, he's he's pretty much try plan A, plan B, and everything he's got. Whereas Jerry Story in Carl Fountain's corner was saying what he's been saying right from the start: keep everything straight. The tactical stuff is coming from the Irishman's corner. The emotion is coming from the Welsh corner. Good right hand as he circles the ring with his hands down Turley. This is where from might get more success when Turley starts to tire a little bit and the hands come down. Yeah, and you just wonder if that little barrage at the end of round eight might have slowed Turley down a little bit. Now can Frampton find another gear here? Well, Turley with the old peekaboo stuff, keeping the hands low. But you've got to give credit to uh, Robbie Turley. He's come in and he's doing his very, very best. Decent shot as well, nice little counter from Turley. It's one of those fights that could be a really interesting scorecard. A lot of times it's what you like, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Because sometimes Franklin just doesn't throw enough punches. He's trying to be very accurate, but you've got to let a few more go. If you're impressed with the, the tactics and the trickery and the counter-punching of Turley, he might just be pinching one or two rounds. But if you like the quality, decent shots of Frampton, you might have him winning by a very comfortable margin. These will be three interesting cards, assuming it goes the distance. Frampton will still be looking to do something about that. And he lands a decent left again, but Turley has taken everything so far, there was that knockdown, Turley will insist that his legs went from under him. And he has a point, but it scores as a knockdown. Well, he's looking quite confident in this round, Turley, some decent work, lands with another right hand there. Made Frampton miss quite a lot. I tell you, Carl Frampton's been asked more questions in this fight than the previous nine he's had. He really has. It's a tough style to work out, and for the most part, he's struggled a little bit working it out, hasn't he? And it's been a terrific pace. Can't believe we've done nine rounds already. They've gone by in the blink of an eye. Just one more to go. And this has been a decent round for Turley. He certainly finished on top, didn't he? 
Okay, okay. Right, right back, right back. Relax. Good right hand from Turley, enjoying a decent round, lots of confidence, letting the punches go. Making miss and things like you about making miss, backing with threes and twos. The stats should not lie. Should be comfortable in this one. Best three minutes of your life. Come on. Come on. Come on. But Turley, he won't worry about that scorecard. That's unofficial. And why would you worry about something you can't control? And look who's up off his stool early. He's given it everything he's got, the Welshman. And if he is on the wrong end of this decision, it won't be for a lack of effort. Round 10 of what's been a terrific Celtic Super Bantamweight scrap. Carl Frampton, the champion, the red-hot favourite in the yellow, has been given all he can handle by the underdog Welshman from down the road. Well, really pumped up for this last round, Turley. I think it's a bit of a psychological victory. Well, even if he does lose, you know, Turley potentially has propelled himself out of the journeyman class here as a great left hand comes through from Frampton. Turley has, Turley's taken some really good shots tonight and stood up to them. He really has. Been a very spirited effort. Frampton looking to finish with a flourish. You never want to leave it to the judges if you can avoid it. And now a gum shield has uh, come out. It's Turley's. What a battle this has been. You just wonder how the judges are seeing it. Well, that's the beauty of boxing, isn't it? Or the thing about boxing that drives you mad. Your card says Frampton comfortably. The punch is landed, computer says Frampton comfortably. What do the three guys at ringside see? Well, oh, that was another good left. And can Frampton finish it yet? 10 out of 10 for effort for Turley. Took an excellent punch there. That really was a wicked shot. And Turley felt it. I think he's in a little bit of trouble here. He's hanging on and holding. Well, they've well exerted, the sorry, they've exerted a lot of energy in this fight. It's been non-stop. We're inside the last minute. Is there yet one more twist? Can Frampton pull out a big one? Now Frampton looking frustrated there as Turley just dived inside and held and spoiled. And look at this. In the last 30 seconds of the fight, they're trading. Hard Foster getting animated there, one of them in a break cleanly. Well, it's Frampton's fight, you would think. But my goodness me, he's had to work for this. Oh, and another terrific combination. Is there yet time for the finish? And Turdy, this time, hangs on for dear life. And if there was any doubt, this last round has been all Carl Frampton, but Turley finishes on his feet. And I don't think there were too many at ringside would have predicted that at the start of this fight. Frampton, the big puncher, taken the full distance by the bravery and tenacity of Carl Turley. The stats don't tell the story. They really don't. Excellent success from Framden. But they don't tell you how much Turley put into that fight. Here's the story of what happened. Early on, Framden was looking very sharp. His punch picking was, was excellent. But we got to see that Turley was given as good as he got. And always coming back with punches. Moving well round the ring. Halfway through the fight, 
Frampton managed to pull him into a fight, managed to stand with him, but Turley was still happy to do that. It was just Frampton's better punch picking for me that was impressing. He had some good spells. There was a, a knockdown and then a, a point taken off. But towards the end, Turley getting a little bit ragged, hands coming down, Frampton picking the better punches and rocking the head around in the last round with a couple of good eye-catching punches. But it all comes down to the three men at ringside. Winford Jones, Terry O'Connor and Grant Wallace. How did they read it? Turley celebrating with his cheerleader section. And win or lose, he comes out with his head held high. And if Frampton does indeed get the decision, Barry McGuigan and the rest of his team will know this has been one heck of a battle. And good to see that mutual respect at the end, which is exactly how it should be. They've both given everything they've got. And I think we are finally ready for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of championship action, here are the judges' scorecards. Judge Winford Jones sees the contest 98-91. Terry O'Connor sees the contest 96-93. And Judge Grant Wallace scores the contest 98-92. All three judges in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. And still, yeah, the Celtic got it. Super Bantamweight Champion. Uh, and a wry smile oh. there. Belfast, As well Northern from Robbie Turley. I think he knew and I think he accepted it. A couple of those a little oh, bit wide, but it was always going to be one of those fights that a lot of rounds you'd score his way, even though he wasn't necessarily dominating the whole fight. Yep, but the judges, I think they went for the, the better punch picking. A really good fight that was, and it's a very good fight for Carl Frampton. He'll learn a lot from that. Barry McGuigan aiming to get him for that British title, currently hold, held by Jason Booth. And uh, these are dressing room shots, of course, of the main event here tonight. And uh, Andrew Murray just warming up there for his fight. But uh, Robbie Turley, we have to say, on the fight we've just seen, what a brave, brave challenger he was for this Celtic Super Bantamweight title. Really good fight that, Johnny. A cracking fight, he could have, he won't so much from that fight, best thing for him. And um, there's Barry McGuigan talking to his protege. So let's go and find out what the winner's got to say. Carl Frampton with Ed Robinson. Well, Carl, you got the win, but you were taking the distance, you were cut, you had a point deducted. How do you assess the performance? Uh, to be honest, um I'm a bit disappointed. I made it very hard for myself. I was trying to fade him too much. I was trying to. I thought I could have went in there and blew him out, to tell you the truth. But you know, he, he, was, he was made of steel. He was a hard man. Um, once I started boxing, then Jerry was telling me to do the job, and you could see some of the boxing skills coming through. But I should have been doing that from the start, and it would have made it much easier for myself. Why was his style so awkward for you? Well, you know, he, he would be awkward for anyone. The type of guy could make you look bad. Um, but credit to him, you know, that's his style. and. Um, you know, he made it. He made it hard for me, and fair play to the lad for taking the fight. But I'm just disappointed that I didn't perform. First fight, late fight on Sky, and I just didn't. It didn't perform my potential. Barry, you still stand by Carl being ready for British title shot now? Absolutely. I think. I think Robbie Turley is he proved against uh, Jamie Arthur. He's a very awkward guy. If you give him room, and that's what he done. He gave him too much room. He tried to throw too many heavy punches early on instead of picked in the shots. But it's a learning curve, it's all about a learning curve. It's 10 rounds, it's good for him, and we're moving on, and we're happy to work him into a British title fight as soon as possible. I know if he's boxing a guy that's less elusive, he'll find it much easier to hit him, but he's got to deal with these guys. He had a good experience tonight, and it's onwards and upwards. Well done. Barry McGuigan, absolutely right there. I mean, it's his 10th fight, he's won them all. Uh, this one is the longest, first time he's gone the full distance, 10, 10 points. Uh, 10 rounds to win on points, but surely, Darren, do you think he's being a bit hard on himself there, being I disappointed? Think so. I was impressed with both men. I think um, Barry's right. You know, Turley was a you know very awkward opponent, and uh, like Frampton said, he would make any anyone look bad. Um, 
Buffalo, he, you know, at times he, he boxed really, really he well. He gave Barry a bit of a sweat, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Barry yeah, was chewing that chewing gum like an old But so many young fighters just get easy ones. This is the sort of fight did, that did, he did, needed. This was the best thing that could have happened for, for Carl uh, Frampton. He, uh, he started off very impressively, nice, strong jabs, found the openings, picked up, picked Turley off, and we thought, this is not going to go far. Then he sustained the cut. When Turley came back, you know, that, that stubbornness about him, that awkwardness about him, made it hard, and Turley managed to talk Frampton into his kind of tear up. That's where the cut was, in the, where the cut was landed. This yeah, it was fair to, to count it as a knockdown because if he didn't get punched, he wouldn't have gone down mm. Turley. I think so, sometimes Turley was an accident waiting to happen. I mean, he just kept dropping his right hand every time he threw it. That's how, that's how he fights. Mm. I think this was unfair at this point here. The bell had gone, Frampton let the shot go, the referee took a point of him. The shot had already been set off. Uh, it was a bit harsh, but uh, for Frampton, I think that was probably one of the best fights he could have had to learn. It just shows how, 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 how far he's gone in his career. Well, what a good start to our triple venue tonight. We're going to stay, though, at Cardiff because it's our headline fight from there. It's the vacant European lightweight title between two boxers with great records. Andrew Murray is unbeaten after 24 fights, and Gavin Reese has lost only one of 35. And that, remember, was in a world title defence. Ed Robinson sets up this one. At 31, Gavin Reese can be proud of all he's achieved in boxing. World Light Welterweight Champion, Prize Fighter winner, and former undefeated Lonsdale belt holder. But the man known as The Rock wants more. European next. Maybe cut the defences and move on for me. Hopefully get a world title shot again. I've been two world champion. There's a long game plan for me. Reese must snap the long unbeaten run of Irish hope Andrew Murray if he is to add the European belt to his impressive collection. Both styles will gel well. I think it'll be a great fight and uh, you know, it's one not to be missed. In his last fight, Gary took on another tall and rangy undefeated hope in Liverpool's John Watson. And after 11 topsy-turvy rounds, Rhys prevailed in a candidate for domestic fight of the year. A pro since the late 90s, the compact Newbridge Livewire seems to have regained his appetite after dropping down to lightweight and teaming up with former pro Gary Lockett. He's got to be something special to beat this kid. He's a, he's a little firecracker, uh, very, very fast from the outside. And I think his, his size, uh, he turns it to his advantage. Murray, of course, has ambitions of his own. And after a steady but impressive apprenticeship, believes he's more than ready for his big chance. I want nothing more than that European title at the moment. I've, I've put in a, you know, a serious hard camp for, for this, and I'm, it's all about the win for me. I see myself stopping him towards middle rounds, middle to late rounds. My speed's too much, my power's too much. I'm feeling great at um, this stage of my career. I'm feeling fantastic. So, Darren, what do you think is going to happen in this one? They've got great records on paper. I remember hearing Barry earlier say um, he thinks it could be a cracker, and I, I agree as well. I mean, um, Murray is sometimes guilty of getting involved and having a tear up, and obviously Gavin, uh, Gavin Reeves likes to get stuck in, so I think we could be in for a real, real good fight here. Of course, he's just uh, beaten Watson in his last fight, Gavin Reese, to, to win the British title. If he wins the European tonight, which is vacant, uh, a step back towards a world title. Of course, and Gavin Reese has always slid under the radar. He's very unassuming, but still a winner coming through. He likes the taller opponents, likes to put him under pressure. He's got an amazing engine uh, to put his opponents under pressure. So against Murray, the taller ranger opponent, let's see how he gets to him. So what about that Reese murray fight? What do you remember of that? Uh, uh, well, uh, the Reese Murray fight yeah. coming up. I think. I think. Sorry, the Reese uh, Watson, Watson fight. fight. Uh, Reese Watson. Watson fight. Watson. Uh, he was the young pretender. They expected him to be able to to, to put the pressure on it and take the mantle of Reese. But Reese wouldn't let him go. The Reese had the uh, experience to put him under pressure. Uh, he had the the engine to put him under pressure. Kept push, uh, kept pushing him back and, and put Watson in a situation he wasn't comfortable in. And that's why he got the win. So, for you. I think, so I think it proves uh, Reese is above this level as well. I mean, he, he should be fighting for European titles here, and he wants to get back to where he was fighting for world titles, and he wants to be world champion again. So I think this is a fantastic fight for him. Well, they've had so many fights, 54 between them, just lost one between them. Will Murray uh, lose his unbeaten record, or will Reese get back into the t into the big time? There's Reese on the left, Murray on the right. The big fight between them, the European vacant title coming up.
Eight men. Thirty-two grand. Prize fighter, the welterweights this Tuesday at eight, Sky Sports HD two. Brighten up your garden this summer. Right now we're doing three for two mix and match on all plants. This weekend, let's do it together. B and Q. Oh my god. One million and Lady Million. Fragrances by Paco Rubin. Great Tastes of America is back at McDonald's. Five weeks, five destinations, five burgers. This week, the New York Classic. Here for one week only. It's McDonald's, but yeehaw. Thank you, thank you for all the meaty sausages. Thanks for all the walls. You're so very wonderful. You're the best wife in the whole world, Mummy Bear. But you can't really tell me that because he's just a bloke, really. You got five minutes? Depends on what for. Lunch. <laughs> I can't have lunch with you. I'm just an egg. Oh, you're more than just an egg. You're our boiled. <laughs> you're meaty. And breaded. Well, when you put it that way. Oh, very naughty. <laughs> Oasis. It'll go with anything. Highness and Court here to see you. Quick, put your lead back on. We're three women on a budget and on a mission. Checking out stuff you love to do in search of what we call deal appeal. We are the KGB Deal Makers. For places with deal appeals, sign up now at kgbdeals.co.uk. Don't you think you're kind of ruining the mood with that? You know, if you pop your phone in an empty glass, it acts like a speaker. Thanks, Brian. No problem. Thanks, mate. O2 Gurus are here to help. For free, in O2 shops and online. The first leg of our triple venue of tonight's big time boxing is in Cardiff for the first leg. And we're about to see, I'm sure, an explosive fight for the vacant European lightweight title. It's between Gavin Rees of Newbridge in Wales and Andrew Murray from Cavan in Ireland. And Andrew Murray is about to start his ring walk, so let's go and join our MC at Cardiff, Michael Potts. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Cardiff Motor Points Arena, this is the main event of the evening. Please welcome the first of tonight's challenges for the vacant championship. From Cavan Island, the quiet man, Andrew Murray. Well, back in the early 1960s, the great Johnny Caldwell began his career with 25 consecutive victories on the way to becoming world bantamweight champion. And that's a thing that could be matched by this Irishman. Andrew Murray, the self-styled quiet man from Cavan, 
as he bids to be crowned no, king no, of the no, European lightweights. No, to do that, Murray will have to win in the other guy's backyard, and he's a big underdog too, but he's also trained like a demon for what he recognises as a terrific opportunity to achieve some serious recognition. The quiet man is definitely ready to make some noise. Well, he's got excellent support here. Certainly a lot have come to see him. And a big opportunity lies ahead. He can get that European title. Some big fights out there. Yeah, I think there's a chance that Murray supporters might outshout Gavin Reeves followers here. He may be the quiet man, Murray. His supporters are anything but. And here he is. Leaving his dressing room, the former world champion getting ready to try and win the European lightweight title. And introducing to you the second of tonight's challenges for the championship from Newbridge, South Wales, Gavin the Rock Rees. to win the European lightweight title, beating a Frenchman just up the road in the valley town of Mountain Ash. But Wales had to wait until 2002 for its second European champion, Jason Book, shocking Sandro Casamonica in Italy with a one-punch knockout. Now, Gavin Rees looks to become the third Welsh boxer to be crowned European lightweight king. And if he fulfills that ambition, the 31-year-old from Newbridge will be on course to achieve his goal of becoming a double world champion, having already reigned as WBA light welterweight king. And the 31 years of age, Glenn, time no longer on his side. He needs to take care of business tonight. He certainly does, but we're seeing him. He's in good form. And he's a very good fighter who I think is underrated. Can box and can fight. Well, let's have a look at the tail of the tape. Big height advantage for Andrew Murray, or is that going to be a disadvantage in this one? He's got the height and the reach, but uh, Reese may be able to counter that with his superior speed. Looking at some of the uh, key stats, Kevin Reese has been around a long time now, hasn't he? 13 years, 35 fights, he's had some inactivity. And Andrew Murray, 24 fights unbeaten. A lot of those KOs came early. He's not known as a big banger. Well, if you fancy a flutter, Reese is the odds on favourite. Andrew Murray, a big outsider at 2-1. Uh, and a huge outsider to get a knockout here. That is not on the agenda as far as the experts are concerned. If you fancy a draw, 33-1 to one might tempt you. Ladies and gentlemen, Barry Hearn for Matchroom Sport. Sponsored by Butte Property Services. Live and exclusive on Sky Sports HD, Big Time Boxing. Bradley present 12 three-minute rounds of boxing for the vacant lightweight championship of Europe. The officials have been appointed by the European Boxing Union and the British Boxing Board of Control. EBU supervisor at ringside is Mr. Jean-Marcel Nartz. British Boxing Board of Control, stood in charge, Ron Pavet. Timekeeper at the bell, Peter McCann from Harrow. The three scoring judges at ringside are Bella Floya from Hungary, Michael Hook from Sweden, and Luca Montella from Italy. Finally, when the action commences, the referee in charge of the action, a warm Welsh welcome, please, for Mr. Jürgen Langos from Frankfurt, Germany. Introducing to you firstly, boxing out of the red corner, wearing the blue colour shorts trimmed with white, 
of the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled nine stone, eight pounds, eight ounces. His unblemished record reads, 24 contests, 24 wins, 12 of those wins coming by a way of knockouts, presenting from Cavan Island, Andrew, the Quiet Man, Murray. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the red, blue, and silver spangled shorts. At the weigh-in yesterday, he scaled nine stone, eight pounds. His outstanding record reads, 35 contests, 34 wins. 16 of those wins come in by a way of knockout with just the single defeat. He comes to the ring this evening as the former undefeated lightweight champion of Great Britain and the former WBA right welterweight champion of the world from Newbridge, South Wales, Gavin the Rock. Mr. Langos with his final instructions. 12 three minute rounds. I gave you the instructions in the dressing room. I expect a clean and fair fight. Listen at all times to my commands. Touch glove and good luck to you, okay? So Gavin Reese and Andrew Murray going head to head for the vacant European lightweight title. Reese vacating the British crown. And this title vacated by John Murray, who will box Kevin Mitchell. And it should be an interesting one. Because for all that the experts reckon Reese is the overwhelming favourite here, Murray has done everything that's been asked of him so far in his career. It's the rock against the quiet man. We think the styles would gel here. The tall, upright boxer against the, the stocky fighter, but Reese can box as well. And Reese starts off throwing bombs. It was interesting to hear Barry McGuigan before this action starting saying that Reese is going to try and draw Murray into a fight. And uh, talking to Gary Lockett, Reese's trainer, he said the speed of Reese is going to be big here because he can fight on the inside and he can move to the outside as well and be very effective. And Murray has got to use that height, that reach, try and get that the centre of the ring, make Reese do the work from the, the outside. Well, the report card on Murray is that he's fundamentally sound, he's not flashy, he doesn't do anything badly, he boxes behind that left jab of his, keeps everything at range, kicks his opponent off, does everything right, but doesn't have power. Even his close handlers will admit to that. The question is, can he keep Gavin Reese off for 12 rounds and outbox him? Always the question in the past with Reese has been, how dedicated has he been? But when you're with a trainer like Gary Lockett, I don't know that you can get away with cutting corners. Lockett just won't have it. Well, Lockett says he's worked very hard for this. He's in great shape, better than ever before. But Murray, he's took himself off to training camp and really whipped himself into expert shape. Yeah, he was in a little place called Ross Muck in Connemara. And uh, that's a little village that produced one Sean Mannion. You might remember him fighting a host of uh, big-name fighters, including Mike McCallum for the world wide middleweight title back in 1984. Well, he's been there for six weeks and he's come straight from there to Cardiff. He has dedicated himself for this big opportunity, the Irishman. Now, let's see if that six-week training camp will pay off for him. Well, Reese is making good use of the jab, the small man. He works that punch well, he gets in. And the speed just showing a little bit. Reese has just got the, the edge there. Yeah, Murray, uh, this is a bit of a tentative start for him, he's just getting a few range finders and not quite finding the range at the moment. Yep, that speed from Reese telling again with a quick left hook counter, he just dances out of range. Yeah, Murray's uh, camp brought over some Venezuelans to uh, spar with him to try and uh, replicate the speed of Gavin Reese. And so far, 
Reese's speed is uh, causing one or two problems for the Irishman. You know what? It's not what goes on at breakfast. It's what goes in that matters. Crispy, tasty, and full of whole grain goodness. The new range of Weetabix Minis. Straight at you, right? You're making them reach and you're making them pay. That's really good, right? Stay at that pace, don't load up, right? Well, well one round down, down and uh, nice Reese certainly uh, out punching Murray. Good. And Gary Lockett, right, while we were away, was saying, You're finding this too easy, don't get carried away. I'm sure he won't. Nice, quick, sharp counters from Gavin Reese. And Murray just needs to up his work rate. He's been quite a disciplinarian with his man as Gary Lockett. He said he's got him involved in more structured training, working on his defences a little bit more. Reese was always easy to hit. And uh, Lockett's been trying to do something about that, working on his discipline and just maximising the natural advantages that he has, as well as a little bit more scientific approach to uh, diet and nutrition. That's uh, traditionally never been one of uh, Gavin's strong points with the best will in the world. But if he applies himself to what uh, Lockett is uh, teaching him, there's no telling at 31, he's got a good few years left in him. Well, his record is pretty impressive already. Just that one loss in 35 fights to a, a good fighter, an Andreas Kotelnik. And he admitted himself he was out of shape and, and didn't deserve to win the fight. So hopefully he's learned his lesson from that. Nothing else wrong so far. And so far, out jabbing the taller, longer man. Oh, he's picking him up really nicely, isn't he, at the moment, the Welshman? Followed up with a little right, right cross as well, but got through. Yeah, the referee just having a little word, he just towers over these two fellas. We're not going to be saying anything bad about the refereeing tonight, I can tell you. Trying to do a little bit more work, Murray, but still not that accurate with that jab. Yeah, it's a, it's a surprise, isn't it? That, that the guy with all the physical advantages, it would seem, is the guy that's having trouble finding his range at the moment. Yeah, he's just falling short, isn't he, with that long jab. Just can't fight, fight get to Reese. That was a really uh, lazy, haphazard left hook came in as well. And missed by a mile. And at the moment, Murray just getting picked up a little bit. Yeah, he's going to try and double that jab up. He's looking for single jabs, Murray. And gets caught with a, a counter, as he did there with the left hook. Yeah, just getting picked off, isn't he, the Irishman? Not a disastrous start by any means, but certainly not a good one. And uh, John Breen in uh, Murray's corner. I think he's already probably going to start thinking about uh, changing things up a little bit. And because the strategy at the moment isn't working. He's not short with all his punches, Murray. Not thoughtful boxing from Reese. Too easy for Reese at the moment. He's really in his comfort zone. Our planet is alive with data. It's generated by cars on a motorway, patients in a hospital, electricity in the grid. The more we understand data, the more answers we find. Patterns are easing traffic in over 400 cities, detecting disease faster, reducing energy costs by 10%. On a smarter planet, we can analyze all the data we now see to make the world work better. Let's build a smarter planet. Good start for uh, Gavin Reese and his connections. Gary Lockett there saying Murray's jab is really slow at the moment. Yeah, good work with his jab. Corners 10 seconds. And then quick with a counter punching. Six out, round three. 
Breen. And in that round as well, John Breen in Murray's corner, Glenn, I'm sure you heard it as well, saying you're boxing brilliantly, you're boxing beautifully. Bit of kidology? Well, I think, you know, they've probably got a, a plan that they're boxing to, and he's obviously following that plan. Maybe hoping he's going to get closer as the rounds go on. And his timing's going to come a bit better than it is. Green obviously knows what his man's capable of. But speed, certainly the story here in the early going. Reese has got it. Murray doesn't. But there's a long way to go yet. And Murray might think as the, as the fight goes on, that extra reach, you know, the speed might just subside from Reese. Defensive work from Murray as uh, as Reese moved in. Oh, Reese looking to attack the body, yeah, having some success there as well. Yep, very good head and body from Gavin Reese, looking to load up just there with the right hand. And he's daring Murray to move in first. And when Murray has made the first move, Reese has caught him on the counter. Reese is moving around, picking him off with a, the jab, working head and body. And it's time that Murray tried something a little bit different, doing the same thing all the time. Not quite working for him yet. We know he doesn't bang. So he's going to have to outbox and outwork and outhustle his man and show his superior boxing skills. We're not seeing it at the moment, although that was a decent right hand that got through from Murray. Yeah, a little too many single shots. He landed when he, when he threw two together there, the right hand landed, and that was better. And he's landed a couple of lefts here, but takes a couple back in response. And this one's starting to uh, boil up a little bit. And it's certainly a little bit better for Murray. This was a quiet start, but I think Murray knows he's got to try and do a bit more. Good from Reese, though. Nice little combination getting through again. And Murray getting caught with another left. But so far, Murray just can't handle the speed of Reese. He's now picking up the tempo, going through the gears, starting to land more and more. Yeah, had a little moment of uh, success there, Murray. And then Reese just picked up the pace again. And the moment was gone. Carling are offering you your perfect pint. You can have it wherever, whenever, and however you like. Tell Carling what it is, and if they like it, if they really, really like it, they can make it happen. Like this. Isn't that right, boys? Yeah. yeah. And there's millions more prizes to give away to make your pint even more perfect. Just buy a can or a pint of Carling for your chance to win. Cheers. Yeah, it was good. Doing really, really well. Well, talking to Gary Lockett last week, he was saying that he thought speed would be the key to this one. As we look at the uh, stats, Reese, certainly the faster of the two boxers. Yeah, it's just doing that bit more, he's, the speed is, is telling, he's switching up from body and head, and he's looking to throw one, twos and three punches, whereas Murray, too many single punches. And again, between rounds, Lockett was saying to Gavin Rees, the opponent is just too slow. Just looking for those single left jabs, Murray. Now tries a, a right, that was better. And it produced a response. He landed a right in the last round and got a response from Reese. It's happened again. But again, Glenn, going back to what you were saying, it's a single punch, isn't it? Certainly too many of them. He's got to start throwing combinations now. Especially when you're not a power puncher.
he's just able to just lean back out of range and then get quickly into range to get his punches off. And again, just landing a couple of long right hands and then getting in close. And Murray can't do any damage when it's close and inside. Reese just using his experience, isn't he? Everything he's gained with them big fights, former world champion. You've got to like the way he's pacing this fight as well, and that is something else that a new training regime has been working on. Again, just to quote Gary Lockett, he was saying, he said when he took him over, he said it was a championship fight, a boxing like a six-rounder. There's more pace and structure to his work in this fight. And what's good is, if, if, if a punch lands to him, he's quickly back with two and three, just to wipe out any memory of that. And he's not having to work particularly hard. You know, a little sign of frustration from Murray as he uh, threw a punch at the uh, departing back of his opponent. And, uh, lands with a right hand there. All too infrequent though as he comes forward, just being outboxed. So, uh, making Reese miss there as well. Yes, there's so much. Murray just hitting air. It really is. Tough to make a case for him winning any rounds, really, isn't it? Yeah. Just not doing enough. And for me, at the minute, just been outboxed. Ever thought your online casino wasn't taking you seriously? 32 Red have been awarded Best Online Casino by Casino Meister every year since 2003. Don't monkey around with your choice of casino. 32 Red, we're second to none. You know what a mechanic is? A hitman. Coming for you. Jason Statham, The Mechanic, by Ed Monday. Well, they're getting a bit more animated in the Murray corner now. Bang, bang, bang. And they do need to step it up a little bit. There's a success for Murray with the right hand. He suddenly put two punches together and it worked. But that's what we need more of from him. Now, this is a man they say does all the fundamentals, good work rate, solid jab. Good footwork, great stamina and conditioning. But he's got to start letting these punches flow. A little better with the right hand from Murray, who's done to connect. And Reese got him back. And there's nothing more disheartening than when you land what you think is a decent shot, and it one comes straight back at you. And there he is, missing again, Murray. And again. But John Green was asking for combinations. He wants them to bring the left hook behind the right hand. There's too many left right or just a single jab. I'm sure a lot of people are watching this. That was a good right hand. But Reese took it well. well. That'll give him a bit of encouragement. Well, he's definitely started this round better. Murray, he's come out trying to let that combination go. The left, right, still needs to bring that the left hook behind it. making a miss again with that left he's been on the end of an awful lot of left hands and there's another one and another well Obviously. he's using his jab excellently well, isn't he it's, 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 it's almost like watching a matador in there at the moment it's very precise that's wearing his opponent down getting him again and stepping in so that murray can't do anything about it 
I mean, at times, Reese has really given Murray a, a boxing lesson in there. Murray misses again, badly. Getting caught with another one of those lefts. I, mean, I think the boxing skills of Gavin Reef have, have been underestimated. You know, he's very good when he just moves around the ring, just sways in and out of reach like he's doing there, and then comes back with, with punches. Well, there's only two potential clouds on the horizon for Gavin Reese at the moment. One is that he hasn't done his training, and he will get caught out later on, but he might finish it right here as well as he starts to open up. And now it's Murray's turn to hang on a little bit. So suddenly goes to work. What a good bunch of punches there from Gavin Reese. Oh, he's in complete control, isn't he? I was going to say, there's only two things that can worry him, a lack of training, and there's no evidence of that. And the other thing that could possibly bother him is complacency, because it's just too easy for him at the moment. Yeah, boxing from long range was good, and then very good to see Reese finally just explode into action with nice combinations. And poor success rate for, for Murray, we saw there, who's missing, just punching air a great deal. And look at the way, just slips to the side, lands that punch, and then springs into action here, like a little dynamo. There's that, the big right hand that really set him going then. I think he knew he'd hurt Murray a little bit, shook him up. Then went to work. Round six of this battle for the vacant European lightweight title. Gavin Reese, the rock, the former world champion at light welterweight. His ambition is to rule at this lower weight. To do that, he's got to take the next step up. And win this lightweight title. Had a lot of problems after he won the British title with, with nosebleeds. He's been inactive for seven months, but uh, it was a, a little sharp, jagged bone that was pressing against a, a blood vessel in his nose. And every time he got popped, even in sparring, he said it would just turn on like a tap. Well, that's been cauterized and uh, it seems to have worked. Not that uh, Murray's landed too many punches to the nose area. No, he's enjoying himself in there, isn't he, Gavin Reese? It's too easy. Yeah, he's got himself in good shape. The reaction timing is very, very good. He's avoiding punch as well and coming straight back. Oh, he's just toying with him. Oh, that was a super little left. What a roundhouse. Looking to load up a little bit more now, isn't he? And I tell you, all those Murray supporters, and they are all over this auditorium. They are sitting on their hands. They've had nothing to shout about. Right hand comes in from Murray. Well, he finally gets through one. He's finding it very difficult, though, isn't he? Exactly. Missing right. so much. Must be frustrating for Murray, punching so much air. But it must be one to about 15 of Reese's. And you'd still give him a chance if he was a known banger, that one of those big hand punches could land and turn things upside down. But he's not a puncher. He's not going to take you out with a single shot. Reese might. And Reese might be looking to do that right here, landing a couple of rights, following up with a left hook. Back with a right again, and another right. And Murray is getting systematically worn down here. Yeah, getting very one-sided, isn't it? Starting to ship more leather as well, Murray, as Reese looks to... Another big right hand, he's starting to really find his rangefinders now with the right, it was the left in the last round. And another right hand, and Murray walked onto it. Took it well. But that's a lot of big right crosses that Andrew Murray has walked on in this sixth round. And he's just got his hands down by his sides now, taunting his opponent, Gavin Reese. Yes, contempt. That really is. But it is a very good performance from Gavin Reese. 
Well, complete and utter domination of that round. Andrew Murray had no answers at all. I mean, it was... I'm surprised they've given him eight punches. 24 to 8. The, the percentage is terrific for Reese. And he was even able to do a bit of razzle dazzle as well. Yeah, he's hardly missing it all. Where Murray just can't find the target, and he's enjoying himself, starting to show off a little bit in there. Gavin Reese, the speed, the combinations, everything is working well. Looks like they prepared excellently for this fight, and it's paying off. Oh, well, surely the only thing you're saying in the Reese corner is concentrate. There's nothing else to say. Six out, round seven. There is nothing you would change through the first six rounds of this fight if you're Gavin Reese. Just six more rounds of the same, or less possibly, and the European title will be his. Rock back by a doubled up left jab from Reese. Just picks up the pace when he needs to, Reese. And Murray doesn't have an answer. It's getting a little bit to the point where Murray's going to have to go for broke a bit. Walks onto another right hand. How do you go for broke, Glenn, when you can't find any answers at all? No. He's Nothing just going to try and throw, throw some punches, get them off. At the minute, he just can't catch Reese at all. Yeah, at this point, he might as well just sell out and turn into a brawler, but that's not his game. He's a stylish, accomplished boxer, but Gavin Reese is just giving him a lesson in there right now. Yeah, at times, he's playing with him, isn't he? Can do pretty much anything he wants, Reese. An amateur career for Andrew Murray. Domestic titles beat Ricky Burns. An unblemished record as a professional. But right now in Cardiff, fighting for the European lightweight title, the past counts for nothing. The present is a nightmare for Andrew Murray. Some good body punches, and then he switches to the head. Gavin Reese just picking it up again. A little left of the body now as, as he switches the point of attack again, going downstairs. It's whatever he wants to do, isn't it? Yep. Everything he does, he's successful with changing the tactics throughout the fight. How much of this is down to a difference in his training regime, a different, a difference in his, in his application? The, you know, he's always, he's always been a, a decent fighter. He's always been good. You know, his record. You know, you don't win world titles for nothing. But you know, I think that difference is certainly showing. You know, his reaction time is very good, very elusive. He's been in there. Blueberry and apple, blast my bedazzled buds with blindly brilliant bursts of bewitching bliss. I can turn up the danger if you want. Do it a bit more. Blueberry and apple, no? Blueberry. Blueberry and apple, blast my bedazzled buds with blindingly brilliant bursts of bewitching bliss. <laughs> Willie Limond at ringside with. Uh... His promoter, Tommy Gilmore, hoping to uh, possibly fight the winner of this one. Of course, uh, Kevin Mitchell and John Murray on the horizon as well. The winner of that one could be in the mix. A lot of uh, interesting fights in this uh, weight class. Well, not for Andrew Murray on the evidence we've seen so far. 
Yeah, big punches landing from Gavin Reese, loading up. Have we even looked at your card, Glenn? Do we need to? No. Nope. <laughs> Everything's going Gavin Reese's way. Pretty much, it's a shutout for me. Look at the jab. Bit of a master class at the moment. Nice little left. If you're going to be really picky, and let, let's be really picky for the sheer heck of it, should Gavin Reese be looking to get this fella out of here now? Well, I think, you know, he, he needs to, to try and do that now. Just, you know, finish the job off in, in, a, in a good manner, you know, for a European title. You know, I think he could up the work rate. Your for, for sheer entertainment value. I haven't seen a wobble yet from the Irishman. It's a hole a couple of times, but uh, no real crisis. So he's taken everything that Reese has thrown at him, and uh, Reese made to miss. That hasn't happened too often. Nope, gets a, a rare success, Murray. And again. She's gone a little bit quiet for the time being, well, Gavin Reese. The only voice you might have heard there was John Breen, Murray's trainer, who just yelled out, he's getting tired. Yeah, well, it certainly it looks like he's taking a breather in this round because it's the best Murray's done. In first there as well. The Irishman. Well, I wonder if that's why we haven't seen Murray up the tempo, try and get him out of there. Is he starting to feel the pace? Well, getting caught a little bit here. By Murray's standards in this fight and what we've seen so far, this is uh, a really good round for him. Yeah, and even says that Reese was looking to, to hold on a bit inside and not work. Again, he's wrapping the, the arm up of Murray. Getting a warning from uh, Jürgen Langos. And Murray going to get his first success on my scorecard. <laughs> oh, it's just a little question mark where Gavin Reese is concerned, because by his own admission, he's never... Not always been the greatest trainer, not always been smart with his diet. Is there just a tiny, tiny glimmer of hope for these travelling Irish fans? Or did Reese just take a breather? Well, the stats are damning if you're uh, Andrew Murray. Look at all those punches thrown and virtually nothing landing. No, but some hope he could get from that last round. Gavin just looking a little tired. Was he tired or was he pacing himself? Yeah, and, that's what, uh, and that's what they're saying. They're trying to tell, they're trying to give him some belief that Reese is starting to feel the heat. It's pretty much Murray's only hope right now. A mile behind on points. His only hope is that Reese is feeling the pace. I guess this next round will answer some questions. Well, this is where Murray needs to up the tempo. It's only a little bit of hope for him there. But a massive deficit to make up for. And that is, of course, assuming that Reese is feeling the pace. Well, the work rate has definitely dropped from the Welshman. He's not as sharp in this round as he was in the first six or seven either. And some of these Murray supporters are starting to sense it as well. And for the first time, they're on their feet. 
Well, just a little change in the plot, isn't it? Working the body, Murray. Well, it would be a spectacular collapse if Gavin Reese was to let this slip and have been in complete control. Now, is it starting to hurt him a little bit? Can Murray go through the gears and put some pressure on? And he's definitely looking to hold here. Yeah, he certainly is. Not a good sign for Reese. And the referee's it? letting him off as well. That was very uh, casual there. Separating Reese. It's not casual. No. <laughs> he's taking a point off. Well, I thought he was giving him the benefit. He's just pulled a point off. Well, he doesn't need that, does he? Because it's so far looking like a Murray round, so this could be a 10-8. Oh, this is a referee not to mess with. The tide is turning. Well, he's still doing it, he's still looking to hold. He's all over him, isn't he? Showing a lot of distress, isn't he? It's just all the strength has fallen out of Gavin Reese. And there he is again, throwing a couple of punches, but just getting as close to Murray as he possibly can. And hanging on for dear life. Now, if Murray can just keep him at range, and start to wear him down with a little barrage, who knows what might happen, because Reese right now is sending up some distress flares. Oh, that might change things around a little bit. But Murray's walked through it. Yeah, Murray is getting the better of this round. That was a big swinging punch. He's going for broke here, Reese. He is selling out in these last few seconds of this round. Yeah, a bit of desperation coming into his work there. You are not kidding. How much has Gavin Reese got left? And he threw big punches at the end of that round, and Murray took them. Well, look at him, he's holding, getting very, very tired. Referee, not having any of it. But now that gives Murray a bit of hope. What can he salvage out of this? And the body punches, I think, were taking a little bit out of Murray. Certainly just started to sag, start to really feel it. Well, Ed Robinson is in with John Breen, who's uh, looking after things for uh, Andrew Murray. Ed? Well, John, has the tide shifted? I think uh, Andy Murray's getting better and stronger. Damn reason strong, he's tired. Does Andrew Murray need a knockout, though? No, I don't think so. I think, if it's, I think Andy Murray can stop him. I don't think it's, don't think it's that way they need a knockout. He's got a couple of rounds, but the rounds are close. I think Andy Murray's going to win the fight. How tired is Reese? Very, very tired. Have been tired from fourth or fourth of the round. Thanks, John. Uh, John Breen, of course, will see it his man's way. I mean, this is round 10, and this actually doesn't do Andrew Murray any favours at all because it's getting a bit more air into the lungs for Gavin Reese. And time is not on the Irishman's side. Reese might be feeling the pressure, but he also took the first, what, seven rounds? Yeah. He was really boxing well early on, and you know, he didn't work that hard, he kept it at his own pace early on, so it's quite distressing to see him this tired. It's always the question mark with Reese, though. How much does he apply himself to his training? Lockett is a taskmaster, but if you cut corners in this business, especially with somebody who's as focused and as fit as Andrew Murray, you're going to get found out. Yeah, Murray hasn't changed anything throughout the course of the fight. He's just kept doing the same thing. But now, towards the end, it's starting to work. Had a bit of this in his last fight with John, John Watson, didn't he, Gavin Reese? Had to weather a bit of a storm there, and his body shots then. And he rallied and got the late stoppage. So maybe he's managed to come through his little rocky spell. Decent right hand from Reese. 
His work is ragged now, though. It really is. Especially when you compare it against his earlier work. Well, his earlier work was so good, wasn't he? He was yeah. making Murray miss all the time. Now, he's starting to take punches. And hanging on again. And coming out and manages to land a left hook. But he's got in close again and Murray can't do any work from there. Larissa's work is, is now gone scrappy, hasn't it? What was so polished and looked so good is now a bit of a mess. That was a good right hand. It, it, it's a bit messy, Glenn, but he's also spoiling a lot as well. He's not taking any punishment because Murray can't land clean on him. That's a decent shot again from Reese, but Murray's walked through it. Yep, very tired, Reese. Can he find something more? He's trying to get some punches off, but nothing really clean. Well, you've been there and done it, Glenn. I mean, if somebody says at home, oh, there's only two rounds to go. I mean, two rounds at this stage after ten no, rounds, it can seem like a lifetime. It's, it? it's very, very hard. If, if there's nothing left in the tank, well, what, what can you pull out? Well, Reese is trying to pull out something here. And he just briefly staggered Murray. And Murray's regrouped. And Reese lands another one of those big single shots. But he's throwing his shots and then just falling in and grabbing. But when you've got the lead that he's got, is that going to be enough? Is that going to be a sensible strategy? Two rounds left. Lockett admitting on, that Reese is tired. Five, 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 right? We can all see it. Stand on the outside, every comes in, let him go. Straighten your right hand. Straighten your right hand, you're swinging around the corner, he's just dug in it. Straighten it. Come, Come on, big breath. Right? breath Stop wrestling him on the inside, right? So much. Just tiring you out. Draw some wondering. Well, and has Andrew Murray got enough time? Well, Murray seemed to tire a little bit as well during that round. Well, we heard from John Breen. I think we should hear from uh, Gary Lockett in the opposite camp. He's with Ed. Well, Gary, how are you scoring it, first of all? I've got Gavin up, but it's going, it's going close. Um, I think he's he really tired out about six, seven rounds, but I think he's got his second wind a little bit. But um, it's very, very close. It's still in the balance. How do you see it going from here? I think Gavin is um, going to use his experience and, and, and come on strong, but it's not a confident pick. Thank you. Yeah, an honest assessment from Lockett. And is Reese finding his second wind? And don't forget, Murray's put an awful lot into this. Although he's missed with a lot of punches, you throw a punch, it drains your energy. Well, the last few rounds have been a lot to hold, so that takes a lot out of you. I think it's taken more out of Reese than Murray, though. He's the one that's trying to get those hands free. He's the one that's trying to work. And then you see Reese taking a full blooded jab. Wasn't doing that earlier in the fight. More holding. You want to be careful of that with this referee. And a real tired overhand right from Lockett. There is not a lot in the tank, but equally, he is not letting Murray get on top of him. Well, if he does get through this, Gavin Reese, I think future opponents of just seen something and they'll they'll want to capitalize on him and make him fight at a pace he doesn't want to fight at he did everything as he pleased early in the fight now when it's getting tough he's struggling struggling but getting through it and more holding and coming back with a decent right hand of his own doing just enough to stop John Murray Andy Murray excuse me getting on top of him But all the stylish boxing we saw from him in those first six or seven rounds, it, it's crude, swinging shots, desperation shots, you called them earlier, Glenn. That's all yeah, he's got. That's all he's got left, isn't it? Very, very tired, just hanging in there. Wild punches, missing. He can't even get his jab working now. 
But for all that, Murray can't get on top and control it. He can't land the combination of punches that he needs to try and take what energy is left of Gavin Reese. Well, I think Reese just trying to use his experience to get a little warning for the referee to tidy it up as Reese walks on to a couple of shots from Murray now. If Murray can get a knockdown here with the point deduction as well, the mathematics could get interesting. Well, Reese is in danger of losing another point, I think. Yeah. He really is hanging on by his fingernails. Tell your man, one round to go. Look at all those punches that Reese has landed. Murray, 97 punches landed, but goodness knows how many thrown. So much energy he's uh, wasted in this fight. Well, Murray needs a really big round. Reese needs to hang on. Reese just needs to stand up, surely. If he can get through it, that title should be his. But it's closed right up, hasn't it? And that 10-8 round with the point off. Out, and, it, and if a point does come off in this last round, or there is a knockdown, who knows? What was a procession for the first half of this fight has got very, very interesting. And if this was 15 rounds, if this was old school, you wouldn't fancy Reese's chances one bit. No, he certainly wouldn't. What's he got left? What can he muster from from that empty tank of his. A couple of decent lefts, almost from memory. For a right from Reese. Still landing the better shots. There's another right hand, and Murray, who needs to totally dominate this last round, is not doing so. No, nice eye catching punches from Reese. Got a call on all these reserves of experience here in this last round. on thin ice again with that big German referee <laughs> you can't blame Reese. he's been hanging on since round eight well this is where Reese needs to use the ring a little bit not stay in there in close where it's ragged just just use the ring just try and get back to your boxing skills a little bit catch a, a breather and keep it nice and clean good right hand from Reese. And again, he's got Murray tied up, barring some really late emptying of the tank. It looks like Gavin Reese is probably going to get away with this one. Oh my goodness me, it's close. Murray Veal still needs something big. He needs to put his man on the floor. Well, it just shows you how important that conditioning is in a long, hard fight. Well, Reese knows it, Lockett preaches it, and if Reese hasn't been listening before, he will be now. Nice right hand again from Reese, who's managing just to find the, the few punches that are eye catching that might just be the difference in this one. Just about the last 30 seconds, and there's a little flurry from Reese. He is staggering to the finish line, but the finish line is now in sight. And he's managed to find something from somewhere, Reese, to find a few nice eye-catching punches where Murray hasn't. Murray needed a big, big round, yeah. hasn't got that. Just like that Watson fight for the British title. He's weathered a little storm and come through it, Gavin Reese. Murray must be cursing that slow start of his. And it's going to go to the judges. Reese absolutely relieved to hear that final bell. They're celebrating in the Welsh corner, they are not celebrating in the Irish corner. And that says a lot.
Well, it's going to go to judges from Hungary, Sweden and Italy. Bella Florian, Michael Hook and Luca Montella. But uh, if those punches, if those stats are to be believed, Reese has done more than enough to take this European title. Well, you never know with the, the judges how they see it, what they were looking at, but it'd be hard not to notice the good boxing early in the rounds. He seemed to have it really in the bag. Just started excellently, used his his good speed, his good jabbing. The taller man could not get to him, was just left hitting lots of air as Reese just slotted into his rhythm, got the punches off and looked better and better as the round's gone on. And we looked like we were going to get just a one-sided fight. But then, you know, as the fight went on, Reese suddenly started to, just to tie up bit by bit. Murray started to come into it more and more. And the fight got harder and harder. And as we got in the closing stages, it was Reese just hanging on, losing a point. And Murray starting to get a bit of energy. And maybe just hung on Reese for the last round. Little better boxing, better punches. Should have gotten him a win. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the judges' scorecards. Judge Bella Florian from Hungary and Michael Hook from Sweden. Excuse me, Michael Hook from Sweden and Luca Montella from Italy both score the contest 115 to 112. Judge Bella Florian from Hungary scores the contest 116 to 112. All three judges in full agreement. The winner by way of unanimous decision. And the new lightweight champion of Europe from Newbridge, yeah, South it's going. It was those early rounds that did it Kevin, for him. The Rock. But it's the, right, it's the right decision, you it think? It is the right decision. Got close towards the end, but a good win for Gavin Reese. Hang on. So in this unofficial battle of Ireland versus Wales here in Cardiff, it finishes one apiece. Gavin Reese is the new European lightweight champion. He is, but he desperately ran out of gas too early. It was his hand speed in the early rounds that gave him the title. Big effort after a slow start by the taller Andrew Murray, but he loses his unbeaten record in his 25th contest. We'll be talking to the new European lightweight champion next. G-Mac is back to defend his U.S. Open title against the best in the world. Coverage sponsored by Rolex. Coming soon, Sky Sports HD2. The new feminine fragrance by Paco Rabanne. If I could save time in a bottle. Let's do this. The Hangover Part 2. Music. Turn it up! It's Capital FM. Tune in. There's a song for every mood possible. Capital FM is mega. Without the radio, a hit would not be a hit. Capital FM rocks! The biggest tunes, the biggest artists, all in one place. 95 to 106, Capital FM, the UK's hit music station. My arm is stuck. Brilliant, moving, gripping, incredible, electrifying, unmissable. 127 hours on Blu ray and DVD. goes on at breakfast. It's what goes in that matters. 
Crispy, tasty and full of whole grain goodness. The new range of Weetabix Minis. I'll touch you if you touch me. Hey, little lady, don't you say maybe you and I can leave right now. Now, let's get naked, shake your money, make up, baby, I'm a show you. Buy my game if you know what's good for you. Thank you, thank you for all the meaty sausages. Thanks for all the walls. You're so very wonderful. You're the best wife in the whole world, Mummy Bear. But you can't really tell me that because he's just a bloke, really. <laughs>